Hey, hey! Welcome back to some more Micro Parkour. Today, my friends, is another big episode because we are going to be making our first farm here at Aquatic Industries or Donut Industries or Aquatic Donut Industries. I haven't really finalized the name for this area just yet, so I don't know. Maybe you guys can head down to the comments area and let me know your suggestions and whichever one is most popular, I'll roll with. But yeah, today we make an iron farm. This is going to mark the first ever time I make a fully automatic iron farm in a Minecraft hardcore world. That's how you know I'm starting to get serious with my Minecraft hardcore worlds now. I've never gone for this before because I never thought I would last long enough to the point where we actually get some usage out of it. But here we are, breaking into truly uncharted territory. This is episode 15. This is officially the longest Minecraft parkour season I have ever done. Period. Even including hardcore attempts back on my Python MC channel, this is the longest hardcore world I've ever had. And that alone, I think, deserves a like. So my friends, if you are excited for this episode and for all of the epic stuffs to come, then do be sure to drop a like to show your support for this series. Hit the subscribe button, of course, if you're new around here and you don't want to miss out on my future content. If you do want to go on further with the support, though, you can check out my range of gaming PCs with my friendly folks at Apex over on pythongb.com slash PC. So then, the Iron Farm design. It is largely based Based upon one of Wattles' Minecraft Iron Farm designs, but I have managed to adapt it to the point where we can work with even numbers. Normally, I hate working with even numbers because odd numbers are just so much easier to work with, in my opinion, but... I set myself the challenge to make myself an iron farm design that worked with even numbers. And I think I've got something that works. And believe me, I have toiled away many, many hours on a creative test world to try and make this thing work. What we're going to be needing is a whole bunch of beds, glass, and deep slate. We've already got a whole bunch of deep slate here, which is absolutely lovely. Getting glass is super easy because we can simply purchase it and we can repair some tools while we're here as well all right just over two stacks of glass cotton we've got ourselves some stone cutters for the eventual villager bed areas now for the beds themselves should be pretty easy we've got a village here we need a grand total of four beds because we're gonna have four villagers strictly speaking we could go ahead and have just three villagers in the iron farm but I'm going four because OCD. <laughs> I can't help it. Basically, there's going to be two villager holding areas. And I decided for some weird reason that I would have two villagers in either side. So, yeah. This probably doesn't make a great deal of sense to you folks just yet. But believe me, when the time comes, you'll realize why I'm having four villagers. Or you'll realize that I'm a bit of a nincompoop. And you're wondering why the heck you're even watching this channel. <laughs> So then, my friends, the time has come. We are going to begin this thing. Now, let me chuck some numbers your way. What we need to do is we need to make this farm at least seven blocks above the ground because centered on the villager because an iron golem can spawn anything up to six blocks below or six blocks above the villager side to side doesn't really matter because this is completely flat but yeah like i said the fact of the matter is this we need to go up one two three four five six seven and then this eighth one will be where the actual villager holding pens are. And then we've got the glass right here. This is going to be where the zombie resides in this central bit here. Then there's going to be a couple of stone cutters rather like this. And then we're going to have a couple of two by three areas. And these will be where the villagers go. And we need to do that on both sides. So we go back here. This is going to be where the stone cutters go rather like so. And then a two by three area once again. Then when it comes to the sides, you can simply build that up and do whatever you want. Because on the sides is going to be where the lava blades are, the lava kill chambers for the iron golems. So let's go ahead and build up the little villager holding areas a little bit. We're going only three blocks up. Going to do the same over this side, of course. Just bulk up the outside here. 
and then shore it up with some glass. Now it goes without saying, this is probably not gonna be the most aesthetically pleasing farm you've ever seen, but it's gonna be one of those things I try to make it look nice, probably towards the end. I want to get the functional part of this farm done and dusted first of all. So here we go with the beds. I don't know if the pillow end needs to be at this particular end, but I'm just sort of replicating exactly what I did on my creative test world. So, yeah, we'll do the same over here. These two blocks are where the villagers themselves are going to be. Is it a bad idea for me to want to have a sleep in here? Uh, I mean, probably. <laughs> But then again, uh, how often are we actually going to be going back to a bed spawn? Probably only at the end of an end trip, right? That's the only time you ever respawn back in a bed, isn't it? On a hardcore world? I could be wrong, though. All right, so the next step is to get the zombie in the center there. It's probably worthwhile getting it done now, so we don't have to worry about it later on. Whereas the villagers will always have access to their little areas, so we don't have to worry too much about getting those guys in right now. But yeah, the zombie, certainly. So we need a little bit of night time, and it's midday. So I guess what we could do in the meantime while we wait for night time to come along is we could probably start getting ourselves a couple of lava buckets. And what better way to get lava than to head into the nether? That's one and that's two and that's all we need. What's our iron supply looking like? Ah, not that great. See, the thing is, we need a whole bunch of iron so we can make ourselves a whole bunch of hoppers for the output chests. And we have nowhere near enough. I think it's six hoppers per side because I want to have two double chests on either side. So, that means 12 hoppers, 12 times 5 is 60. We need about half a stack more. However, we've got ourselves enough nugs to make ourselves another ingot right there. And what that means for us is we should be able to make ourselves one of the output chest sides. So, there we are. This is going to be where the beacons will be. And then we're going to go, I'm going to say, three blocks out in all directions. So, then, here's what... What I am thinking. As I mentioned, beacon beams will go there. We're going to have ourselves a set of output chests here and then another set of output chests on the right here. Then we start going at it with the hoppers. So here we are, something like this. It'll be a two by two lava kill chamber. And then what you may be expecting me to do is make a large glass tube going up to where the eventual water flow is going to be on top of the farm. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use a whole bunch of walls. The reasoning for that will become apparent fairly shortly here, folks. But yeah, for now, I think what I want to do is I want to get myself a whole bunch of walls. Oh, and also a zombie. That's that's something else I'd very much like to try and get up here. Only it has just become nighttime by the looks of it. All right, zombos, if you could do me the honors of spawning on in here, then we might be able to get this thing underway. There's already a spider spawned in, so I guess mobs can spawn here. It's just a case of playing the waiting game. Maybe I should rid some of these here torches, eh? That might be a good way to get more mobs to spawn in. Ah, excellent, a zombie. Right, if I could get this guy to pick up this block, we might have ourselves a pretty good time. Yep, there we are. All right, we've just made it so the zombie will never ever despawn. We now need to get him into his new permanent residence and then, well, that's about it. We just need to sort of block him off and then he'll be in there forevermore. Oh, come on! Really? We have another chance here. Come on now, pick up the block. There we are. Right. If you go into the water, oh man, am I going to be disappointed. Come on. Just keep... Like, why? Why do you even feel the need to go on that crafting table and or chest? Like, seriously, why? Right, come on. Keep following. Keep following. That's it. We come up here. All the way up, buddy. That's it. All the way up. Right, and then you just sort of fall on in here, right? There, oh, good grief. There, there we, ah, what the? Okay. <laughs> Thank goodness we have another falling fall. All right. So now we should be able to get away with putting in these bad boys. And there we have it. We now have a zombie. And he will never, ever be able to escape. Nor 
despawn because he's holding an item. I just don't understand why those other zombies just wound up just falling into the water. They must have known what their fate was being sealed in a two by two area forevermore. <laughs> So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have stairs rather like this going around three of the sides here. And ooh, what are we thinking? We need to have these walls attached to something in the corners. So we need to think of some sort of decorative block that we could use for the corners. I think I've got an idea how good it's going to look remains to be seen though. I think I want to use quartz. We've even got ourselves a bunch of quartz in here, so we should be able to do some pretty cool things. We could have ourselves a bunch of quartz pillars, rather like that. Looks like we've got access to quartz bricks as well, though. That's kind of cool, but we do also have access to a stone cutter, so we might be able to get some different types of quartz even still. Ah, the last of my firework rockets. That's a little bit alarming. We really need to make a proper creeper farm and or a full auto sugar cane farm. All right, for now though, let's go ahead and make a bit of a start on this thing. The corners are all going to be quartz pillars rather like this, although we need some more glass to be placed on the floor rather like so. And then in between the pillars, we can add in all of these walls here. These walls not only technically make the drop shoot a little bit wider for the iron golems to actually fall down, but it also means that they won't get stuck on any blocks or walls while they are at the top and moving around in the water. What we can do while we're building up these drop shoots is we can get to work on getting the lava sources in. So we need to get ourselves up to the top of the chute or where it currently is. Then we need to add in the signs which will serve the purpose of holding the lava up. I'm hoping this won't like waterlog this with lava. Okay, no, it doesn't. Okay, good. <laughs> I had a little bit of fear in my heart right then, my friends, but no matter. The situation sorted itself. And then we can get back to work on shoring this thing up, making it a bit taller. We pretty much need to keep going until we get to the same level as the top of the farm here. All we need to do now is essentially mirror this on the right hand side here after getting ourselves some more iron, that is. Ah, jeez. Should we just get on with it? Should we just get on with the iron goal? I think we need to, don't we? So let's just put some stuff away real quick and then we'll get right on with it. Might be an idea to start filling up our ender chest with some of our more frequently used things. I'm thinking, for example, these tools and bits and bobs here. So then, looks like we do have some bits of iron just sort of on the faces of these cliffs here. So that's not too bad, I guess. 30 is the magic number number we're looking for. Little bit just here. Honestly, I can't wait to have this iron farm up and running. We'll never ever have to worry uh, about trying to dig up iron or find iron ever again. We're just going to have an infinite supply of the darn stuff. Random side note. Wow. <laughs> Look at this area. More giant cliffs, but this time they're savannah cliffs. There we are. 50 bits of iron. That should hopefully be the final ever iron that I actually need to mine up on this world. <laughs> there we are. Hoppers have all been created and that means we can finally get on with getting this other area done and dusted. Add the signs in for holding up the lava here. We can replace the wall and then there we go. Believe it or not, the kill chambers are now done and dusted entirely. And do you know what? This whole black and white scheme that we've got going on here, it doesn't look too bad, I would say. I think we're doing pretty good in terms of a design. You know how we could be doing even better though right now? is if we were lucky enough to have villager zombies spawn on this donut here. Ah, oh, what I would give for that to be the case. See, the thing is, we don't need one, we don't need two. We could go for a minimum of three, but I want to go for four because we've got two beds either side of the zombie. I'm not entirely sure that that makes any difference to the spawn rate of the iron golem, but it does make a difference to satisfying my slight OCD and desire for things to be equal. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> 
So then, how's about we get on with the water flow next day? And this is where we're going to be going absolutely mad with the walls. We're going to have three block tall walls running all the way across up until we get to the corners. The reason why we're doing that is basically just to ensure that the iron golems don't get stuck on anything. They will just flow through the water and just drop straight into the death chute right there. So in order to hold the water flow up, and so it doesn't just flow down and form a bunch of cobble on top of that lava there, we just need to add in a couple more signs, rather like this. These glass blocks are simply so I can place the water buckets against them, otherwise everything else we can pretty much waterlog, which obviously we don't want. So yeah, now we break this, we break that, and would you look at that, we have ourselves a double flowing water flow system. Yeah! All right, how about we do a little bit more decorating around here, folks? I'm thinking maybe I could add some slabs rather like this. So we could have quartz on the outside and then we can have ourselves some deep slate on the inside. Just so we're keeping in line with the whole black and white kind of theme. And checking it out from the bottom, that actually works out pretty darn well. I've got to say, this is going to be one mighty dang fine looking farm, isn't it? Uh, if we place the correct blocks, that is. <laughs> now, there is one pretty clever element to this farm, which we need to try to get done. Probably next, actually. We need daylight sensors. So there we are, four daylight detectors. So here's where things start getting a little bit more interesting, folks. We need to drop on in here. We need to probably block that off, block that off, because what we're going to be doing is placing some trap doors down. Now, the reason we're doing this is because when it comes to nighttime, these being closed like this will be enough for the villagers to be able to sleep. And here's the really clever part, my friends. The daylight detectors that we're going to place in right now, directly above them, as you can see, it's already activated them to the point where they are now open. We need to actually invert that, so change these into nighttime detectors, right? So, when the night time comes, these will flip rather like this, and that'll be enough for the villagers to be able to sleep. And then when it's daytime, they will be open like this, and that'll be enough for the villagers to be able to work. So again, trapdoor, replacing that trapdoor there, and then replacing this one to place it up against it. So again, when they open, they sort of open up to the center. We're then going to replace these glass blocks here with daylight sensors, rather like so. And again, we need to invert them so when it's daytime, they are sort of flat like that. All right, perfect. We are just about done and dusted. The only other thing I think I might want to do is maybe add some sort of slabbed roof to this thing. I mean, why not, right? We might as well go full hog in terms of decorating. We've already kind of got most of it done. Uh, we could totally do like an arch here. We can have ourselves an arch iron farm. <laughs> it's almost going to be like our own little Arc de Triomphe, isn't it? Oh, that is such a cool idea. So this should be an interesting challenge. We need to try and do this in such a way that there are absolutely no solid blocks or even top half slabs. Even if there's top half slabs, iron golems will be able to spawn on it. We need to use non-solid blocks all the way through for our roof design here. All right, so the easiest way to tell if you've got yourself a solid block is whether or not you can place a torch on it. So yeah, we've got a torch being able to be placed here and that is no good. How are we going to get around this one? I mean, that is a decently shaped arch, but I do have some solid areas where I can place torches. All right, have I done this? I think so. I can't place any torches on any of these little bits right here. All right, let me just grab these little scrap blocks and we'll have a little bit of a look at this from afar. It's probably about as good as we're going to get. It doesn't look very arch-like. It looks more like it's got like a sort of manor house kind of roof. Do you know what? I actually kind of like it. <laughs> I think I just had an accidental win here, folks. Oh, that is so cool. All right, so I am critically low on rockets, so I think I'm now going to have to start using just regular blocks to get up to places because 
and I want to run out. It's as simple as that. But we need to start filling in the gaps now, folks. So we just do a little bit of this. And here we are. Fully decorated. I can't believe we've actually done this. That is actually so boss. The thing is, though, I fear I may have accidentally made it so the daylight sensors are now blocked. You can have walls above them and they will still function as normal, but I think there may be a slab or two above them now. So yeah, there's the sensors and there is the blockage. So if I was to quickly do a little bit of that, a little bit of that. Yeah, you just heard it sort of click, didn't you? Ah, okay. We need to think of an alternate solution then. Maybe I could just put trapdoors down up there. Just means this will look a bit quirky, I guess. But you know what? I would like this thing to actually work. And to be honest, we're going to be sort of down the bottom anyway. So I don't think we need to worry too much about it. I mean, yeah, you can see a tiny little sliver of jungle trapdoor. But I don't think that's the end of the world. Not really, folks. I think we've got a decent looking thing here. Literally, all we need to do now is get the villagers. And as much as we could get lucky and get ourselves some villager zombies to spawn in, we do have a village or two nearby, well, nearby-ish, in that uh, we had that one earlier, didn't we? We can have maybe a nether portal go over there, and then maybe we can make another nether portal here. We could transport the villagers via the nether, and then just sort of hope that they gravitate towards their new workstations, right? That might be an idea. Only, I'd quite like to have this thing actually done by the end of today's episode. Look at this farm from afar, though. I think that is a mighty dang fine looking centerpiece for our aquatic donut industries area. <laughs> Might be slightly dangerous doing it this way, but we're going to have our farm portal right here. Hopefully it will generate a new portal in the nether. Here we are. Where are we going to wind up? Okay, so this is indeed a new portal. Oh, good grief. We are actually very close to where the original portal was, which I think is just over there. So let's go ahead and set up a portal just here because why not? Looks like this guy's going to go through pretty much immediately. Wow, you are one eager beaver. <laughs> oh, no, he went out. Okay, never mind. Let's pop in. Let's see where it takes us and let's see where we are in relation to the other portal that we just made. Oh, it's down there. Huh. Okay. I think I can work with this. Woo! Okay. It took some time and a good amount of fall damage, but again, thank goodness for Feather Falling 4. But here we are. We now have a nice safe passage. Well, relatively safe passage. I'll still need to probably bow and arrow some ghasts down, but we got a relatively safe passage for the villagers. Right. So then, villagers, we need to get you to come into the nether rooney. Oh, has that villager spotted that bed? I really hope so. Come on, buddy. Go to the bed. Is he going to go through the portal? Ah, oh, nah. Come on, man. Oh, there's a... Oh, there's... Okay, there's multiple villagers here, in fact. Wait, I wonder if I could push him into the nether while he's sleeping. Can you imagine that? <laughs> oh, that'd be hilarious. Okay, that guy's gone. Uh, bed is occupied. What? I can't rob him? Why can't I rob my own bed back? That's unbelievably disgusting behavior. Right, okay, so you're now going to do that. And you, my good sir. Okay, so that's now three villagers in the nether. Can you believe that? That's unbelievable. We should probably do ourselves a favor here. Let's get ourselves maybe a couple of boats, in fact. And let's push on in here and see what kind of hell hole is waiting for us. Oh, that's not actually too bad. All right, so we've got one villager. Very good. Uh, the other ones, I think it might be an idea to maybe trap them in boats as well. Okay, there we go. So that guy's good. Right. Now we go for a bit of a journey. You go into the portal there, son. All right. Very good. Right. Again, getting rid of the hitboxes. We go on through. And the villager is right there. Come on. You should be able to pathfind your way down. There's nice comfy beds. There's comfy beds waiting for you, bud. All right. Go on. Oh, jeez. Okay, no, 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 no. No! Well, this isn't a massive pain in the butt now, huh? Ah, oh, man. All right, I guess we're going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. Man, this is becoming such a pain in the butt procedure. But, you know, it's all going to be worth it. I just need to keep telling myself that. Go on, villager. Comfy beds away. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Like that, is it? 
Oh no! Go on! Up! Oh, ah! This really is a little bit of a mini game, isn't it? Uh, okay, right. If you're not going to do that, then why don't you drop on in? Go on, drop in. Drop in. Come on. The first out of four. First out of four. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Drop in, drop in, drop in. Yes, I never got. Please. Stop being such a pain. Oh, oh, wait. Did that work? Yeah, he's in. Okay, right. That's one out of two villagers in that side. Not entirely sure if villagers will take new professions in the nether realms, but it is probably my last ditch attempt at trying to figure out some way of luring these villagers because... Oh my goodness, are they a massive pain in the butt. All right, so if I was to chuck this, let's say there. Okay, so one of them has just lost their profession. The only thing is I don't know they can see this just yet. So what about if I was to put it there instead? Ah, yes, here we go. Oh, this is the way. <laughs> All right. Okay, and then we just need to sort of relocate this as we go along, yeah? Yeah. You know what? That's actually working. An absolute treat. Right, now that that guy's gone through, this guy should wind up taking the thingy. Ah, oh, jeez. Don't go through the portal, though. Don't go through the portal. Please! I can only deal with one villager at a time. Hey! I think we just did it. All right, that's one side actually done. And look at that. They do indeed have their professions. They are now both masons. All right, so you go through pretty much straight away. Technically, this should be the third and final villager to actually get this whole farm up and running. But, as I mentioned, we want to try and get four in there. So, let's see if we can't get this guy down into his place. Go on, buddy. Down you go. Oh, jeez. No! <laughs> Why do they keep doing that? They just launched themselves off. That's the second one that's done that. Oh, I think he's pathfinding. We may have a big old W on our hands, folks. Right, so you're going to go up there. Okay, very good. Right, now we just need to get you to drop on in. And... There we go. Uh, properly drop on in. There we have it. Okay, fantastic. So, technically the Iron Golem farm is now up and running, but I just want to get a fourth villager. I, I can't help it. I would just want to get a fourth one. Just let me have this. Villagers, villagers, roll on up. Who's going to be the first dude to take this composter as their job? I do believe we have a winner. It's this guy. And your grand prize is a nether trip. <laughs> Break the boat and then use this to get this guy to pathfind his way all the way up the stairs here. Come on, buddy. Come on. Take your new job. And your reward is a trip to the overworld. <laughs> so then, are you going to provide me with a bunch of headaches or are you going to go straight? Oh, good grief. Yep, that is why we need to get rid of... Oh, jeez, that's really close. That's why we need to get rid of all flat platforms. We now have an iron golem where he isn't supposed to be. Come on, come on. Don't even fret about it. Don't fret about it. There's no one there. There's no one there. All right, we're good. Boom. And block off and begin Operation Restore. Unfortunately, we will have to kill this iron golem because, well, otherwise he's going to mess up the iron golem spawning for the farm. So, um... Ah! Oh! What the? Oh, you came along. Ah, I think that zombie was trying to work in cahoots with that iron golem there. I think he was trying to make me get wrecked by the iron golem. I'm not going to have none of that nonsense though, am I? Alrighty, so presumably, oh no, it is working. I was just going to say, maybe we have to wait for a little bit of time for this thing to sort of, in air quotes, reset. But no. Ah, brill. That's the first iron golem to get killed in this shoot. Yeah! <laughs> oh, that was actually so boss. I would have glass here, but I think that the iron golems might get caught on it. Although maybe not, actually. I think maybe we could get away with glass. I mean, at the end of the day, there's nothing better than actually seeing your farm in action, right? It's a satisfying thing to watch, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Looks like the glass blocks don't affect it because, strictly speaking, they're flowing off the edge and against the back wall, right? There shouldn't be too much of a chance, if any, of the iron golems accidentally landing on the glass blocks as opposed to in the lava. I'll give it a couple more cycles and we'll see how things go. But I've got a good feeling about this, my friends. I think what we have managed to achieve today is absolutely amazing. We've got ourselves an iron farm that not only works, but it looks amazing. I mean, look at it. What a centerpiece. I absolutely 
love this. And look at it. It's still working a tree. <laughs> oh, to say that I am chuffed to bits, my friends, is understatement of the century. So, ladies and gentlemen, on that amazing note, we are going to wrap up today's episode here. But of course, we have the comments of the day to do before we wrap up. Lucas Jared asks, do you have any plans to bring back the regular survival world? Now, I must admit, before this comment, I hadn't really considered the idea that some of you folks may only be on this channel for Minecraft hardcore content. And therefore, you might not even know what is going on with the regular survival world. So let me fill you guys in real quick if you aren't watching the survival world but are interested in watching the new season. Because, well, I mean, to be honest, that is the brass tacks of the matter. We are waiting for a new season to begin. And the point in which the new season begins is when 1.21, the official update, not a snapshot, none of that, the official 1.21 update, that is what we are waiting for in order for us to start ourselves season three of the Let's Play. It's going to be on the same world as the first two seasons, just we're going to be in a different part of the world. So I really do hope that you guys are excited for that. I certainly am. But up until then, we've got this hardcore world. We've got the half hard hardcore streams going on as well. So I really do hope that that'll be enough to keep you guys happy for now. It's certainly enough to keep me happy. So yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about what we've got going on right now. We've got the Let's Play Terraria series on the Terraria channel. We've got Hardcore over here and half hard Hardcore streams. I think that's a nice little balance right there. So then, thank you very much for watching, my friends. If you have enjoyed today's episode and you've enjoyed today's build and farm, then do be sure to drop a like beneath the video. I'd very much appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, my friends, we have an iron farm and it works. And it looks great. And I'm super happy about this. Like, I genuinely am super chuffed about this. Let me know what you think of this build in the comments area down below. Any hints, tips, suggestions, or feedback regarding this build. It's all welcome in the comments down below. I do my best to read and respond to as many comments as possible. So if you've got anything to say, I'll most likely be able to see it. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Do have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye!